Hello everyone, so Maria Trusa with Reflect and Reset with Maria and Gina, but I am solo today. My business partner had some business to take care of and I am here representing us. And I have a special guest with me on Reflect and Reset is Sarah Bonincio from Central Eye Optical. Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm excited. I'm always excited to have guests because we get to talk about not just, you know, what, where they work and what they do, but we, wanted to, we want to learn about people. I'm always curious about people. That's one of the beautiful things of doing the, the work that I do because I get to meet so many people. So we want our followers to get to know Sarah before you tell us what you do a little bit. Who is Sarah? Sarah is very passionate about uh, spreading the word about the importance of eye care. Uh, but other than that, um, I like to play bocce. I love to spend time outside. I am originally from the Bronx, and I work there. Uh, that's where my office is, and I'm very involved in the community there. And um, yeah, I love to hang out with friends and family and. So in your business, your role is to promote and connect and in, in, um, work with the community, right? Yes. So my role at Centralize, which is now part of the Metro Optics Group, uh, we also have locations in the Bronx, uh, is to not only market our practices, but also to connect with our community members because everyone has eyes and yeah. we, need to, we need to take care of them. And a lot of people don't know that there are ways that are better than others to protect your vision. Yeah, so I met Sarah um, because we are, as you know, we have our medical membership because we're very, very focused on helping the uninsured community get access to care, and, which is difficult. And uh, when we met, Sarah was so willing to, to really work with us in giving a major discount to our four main members. And that's what we're about. We are figuring a way that our community can get access to whatever needs they have. And when it comes to the eye and getting glasses, and I can tell you personally, because I, I don't like wearing my glasses, but I pretty much wear my glasses all the time when I'm in the office. And I, I was telling you that I have those trans transitional, is that what they call it? Or Are they the ones that get dark when you go outside? No. no, okay, so you have a progressive lens. Progressive, so I can read from the bottom and then I can look just the same way because I don't have any problems uh, actually long distance. It's, mm -hmm. it's just more for, for reading. So when I met her, I was really excited because I'm, I'm always really humbled by how many people want to help the uninsured community. And that's what I found in you. And that's why she's here today. And we have joined forces together. And we are definitely sending patients to them so that they can help us. And uh, as you know, the membership is for those of you that don't have insurance and that you do not need to uh, give us anything, basically. You say you have no insurance, we are here for you. So it doesn't matter your economic status, your financial status, we are here. Forme is here for you to take care of you. So Sarah, let's talk about some of the, uh, as far as being very expensive, because it could be expensive to get glasses, and we're taking care of that. But let's talk about the importance of checking your eyes, because I don't know if people you know, really understand how important it is that you check your eyes, which is something that you do in your office, right? Of course, yes. So I, I've been wearing glasses since I'm eight years old. I am extremely nearsighted. I happen to be wearing contact lenses right now. Um, but one of, the, one of the most important aspects of um, preserving your eye health is UV protection. Okay, so that's one thing that I always tell everyone. Um, you wanna get a comprehensive eye exam at least once every one to two years. That's the, the benchmark. And the reason is not only to check your vision, and get a prescription for glasses if necessary, but also to check for signs of eye disease. A lot of times, mm -hmm. eye diseases do not pre present um, obvious early symptoms, so there may be something you know brewing back there behind your eye and you may not know until it's too late. And I, had a, I have a personal story about that. My grandmother, um, 
she was a nurse, and they tend to uh, take care of everyone else before they take, before care, they of themselves. take care of themselves. And she unfortunately <laughs> neglected her eye health for a long time. And only when she had a narrowing glaucoma attack did she finally go into the doctor. And by then it was too late, and she ended up losing most of her vision. Wow. So it's just, you know, I'm not trying to scare anyone, but it is really important to know that especially if you have a history of eye problems in your family, you definitely want to stay on top of that. You want to get your eyes checked, like I said, every one to two years, depending okay. on uh, what your doctor recommends. And also, um, you know, if you need vision correction, you'll get a pair of glasses uh, or contacts with that prescription. But also, um, you know, there's, there's sunglasses, there's UV protection, um, there's uh, eye protection. So sunglasses is something that, you know, a lot of people think it's just for the look, but you are really protecting your eyes from the sun. They, well, most of them, you know, if you get a nice style, they, they do look great, but they serve a very important health function as long as they are 100% UV blocking. Now, you could have your UV protection in a clear lens. It just has a proper coating on it, but most people prefer sunglasses when they're outside because the sun's bright and they want to protect their eyes. A common misconception is that you don't need sunglasses when it's not summer. Uh, you do. You need any time you're outside and the, and the sun is present, there's UV present, you're, you are getting cumulative eye damage and you want to, that's why I always have, now these aren't even that dark, but they're fully UV protected, so I always wear these every time. So let me ask you, because you can find glasses, sunglasses, like when you go to the gas station, I know I go to Vermont a lot and I stop at the gas station and they even have sunglasses there. Sure. What are they, how do you know that you're getting uh, UV protecting and uh, protective glasses? You don't. A lot of the times, uh, you know, they'll look dark, which may or may not mean anything. They might say UV protection. There's really no way to verify. And if they're cheap, you, you get what you pay for. So, you know, I wouldn't recommend those if you're serious about eye protection, which we all should be. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, uh, they've did, they did those uh, exposés on the news sometimes where they'll take a pair of glasses like that that cost a couple of bucks and they'll test them and they're maybe protecting you 50% even though they claim to be like 98 to 100. So you got to be careful with that. Anytime you, you purchase um, sunglasses at an eye care provider, you're guaranteed you're getting 100% UV protection. Um, then there's transitions, which you had, you had mentioned before, um, but you meant progressive, but transitions are the ones that turn dark when you go outside. That way you can have your inside glasses and your outside glasses be one pair, and then you don't have to switch. You don't risk losing your glasses, yeah. um, and those offer 100% UV protection as well. And what is the disadvantage? Uh, obviously, we know the advantages, but are there any disadvantages of having the progressive where it, you know, it changes color? How long does it take when you go from the sun to go inside and now you don't have the sun anymore? It takes a couple of minutes to, to turn back. So we just advise people to be careful, you know, on stairs and stuff when you go in. But there's really no disadvantage, so to speak. The thing you want to keep in mind is um, glasses that are designed as sunglasses tend to be, uh, you, the lenses are larger, so they cover more of your eye. And then you get those wrinkle preventing benefits Ooh. as well because the more that's covered the more protection you get so if you have you know smaller in, indoor glasses and their transitions it's good you get protection but you, you kind of want to cover as much of your eye as possible so but the key is a happy medium where you remember to wear your glasses remember to wear your sunglasses yeah I, I didn't even think of that but you're right I mean you are protecting the uh, what do they call them these these uh, wrinkles that we get here that obviously Botox can take care of, but it's expensive. I'm lucky, I would say I'm lucky I have uh, good genes, so to speak, but also, you know, I am very religious about my eye protection, so I would like to think that as I'm nearing my 40s that it'll, it'll pay off, wow. you know. <laughs> well, you're looking great, girl. <laughs> So See, let's. Sunglasses. Uh, um, I'm going to make sure that I wear sunglasses. I um, I'm a little bit. Uh, I'm not great doing that. I know. And but the I realize difficult. the yeah. switching is difficult. I know for me at the beginning because we all get the the forty 
4045 disease where your gla your knee reading glasses. reading glasses. That happens to everyone. Yeah. It, literally everyone. So you're in good company. That is where <laughs> when you're when you're saying to yourself, okay, uh, I'm getting a little older here. And it's hard. It's hard for people. I've been wearing glasses for so long. I'm used to yeah. it. I'm used to needing vision correction. You have some folks who never needed vision correction. They hit a certain age, and it's you know, it's hard for them because they have to no, do something totally different, you know, your habits have to change. So um. I could definitely relate. And I got to tell you that I realized um, that I needed to get the, is it progress? The, which ones are the ones so that I have? What you have is, um, it's a progressive, some folks call it a no line bifocal. It's, it's, that's, it's almost accurate. Basically there is no line. So, you know, a lot of people feel like the bifocal can age you you know, because it's like, oh, that's, you know, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, the progressive has no line. But the, the thing about the progressive is that you can um, you can get distance correction, intermediate, which would be like a computer length in front of you, and then also reading, which is closer up. And it blends seamlessly. So that's the benefit of that. So if you need correction at different distances, that's the benefit of a progressive. It's much yeah. better. You, know, you don't get to jump that you get from a line bifocal. So a lot of people prefer those. Also, aesthetics, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I do like my glasses. I make sure that they were stylish. Of course. You know, that's important. It's a must. <laughs> but I, um, I decided actually to do them, be, to get them because like many of you, I'm sure you were like me and you can relate. I had about 20 pairs <laughs> of glasses everywhere in my house. And then I would go to the restaurant. If something happened mm -hmm. to me that I would go to the restaurant and I'm like, Oh my God, I cannot, I've left my glasses and I actually cannot even know, I, I don't even see the number, uh, how much I have to pay. That's a problem. That could, yeah. <laughs> so I decided to get uh, those um, uh, progressive, right? Right? I, I keep forgetting, the progressive it. classes. It. And uh, for me, it's been amazing because I definitely needed for work, I cannot see my computer without the glasses, and it, it gradually it gets worse. I mean, I remember in in my early forties that it was just you know I had to force myself you were like a plus one, yeah, yeah, and that I could you know just moving a little closer I could read it. It doesn't matter now. I cannot read it without glasses. So for me, that sort of resolved the problem of. Uh, trying to find the glasses because what I do, like I said, I, I wear it from the beginning until I leave. When I go home, I put them away. And then I have my reading glasses because I just want to take a, a rest. Right. But I know a lot of people complain at the, at the beginning when I went to get them that people were saying that, oh, you're going to get a little nauseous. So people have a hard time really tolerating it because of the transition. Um, personally, I had no issues. That was, a, that was a bigger problem years ago. Uh, some people still have a little trouble accommodating to them. They usually get it eventually, just with a little, you have to move your head instead of your eyes. Um, and that's a little bit of an adjustment for them, but they usually get it. Uh, the older lens designs before technology really allowed us to, um, to what we call surface the lenses a different way. Um, it was harder for people because there was a lot of distortion. Now, technology, uh, lens technology specifically has, um, in the manufacturing process, has largely eliminated that. Now, again, you get what you pay for. There are different lens designs. You can get the super basic one. You still don't have the line, and you get those different um, distance correction. But you know, if you pay a little bit more, you will have a much more comfortable experience in that sense. So it depends. You know, some people are less sensitive than others too. They might no problem. So can you get um, contact glasses for? the condition that I have. There, there's something called multifocal contact lenses. A lot of people like those. Wow. Yeah, yeah. The technology is crazy now. Now they have also transition contact lenses where the contact lens itself gets dark when you go outside. Now again, you know, it's, that's more of a visual comfort thing, right? Because uh, contact lenses are mostly about 98, 99% UV blocking, but you're only getting that protection on your eyeball. Yeah. So it'll get darker and you'll feel like, okay, look, I feel more, I get less glare now. It's, it's more visually comfortable, but the sunglasses are really, the, I would say, the better way to go because, again, you're getting that more coverage, which will protect you, your eyes and your skin. Yeah. With the, um, you know, the surgery, that the laser surgery, mm -hmm. um, what do you think of that? 
I've never had it, so I, I can't really speak um, from personal experience. Um, a lot of people think I probably should have had it because I'm so nearsighted that if I get up in the middle of the night and I'm like, you know, scrounging for my glasses, wow. um, you know, I could be in trouble if God forbid there was a fire or something like right. that. And you know, I need to get out the door. I'm that nearsighted. I could see about this far in front without it being blurry. Wow, I'm very nearsighted. Um, so a lot of folks, uh, you know, they they don't want that factor um, they want to be able to see without glasses or contacts and I mean you know the procedure has come such a long way especially in the last few years people have much success with it the recovery time is you know minimal um, you know I don't have anything bad to say about it we don't do it at centralized so um, you know I couldn't offer it to you um, but yeah yeah so as far as um, when it comes to the challenges that you're finding on the people that are coming for eye exam, like what are the, the most common conditions that you're seeing that you're, you guys are you know, experiencing there? So now, um, you know, I don't know about you, but I spend hours, many hours every day on the computer, on my phone, on the tablet. We, you know, most of us, you know, yeah. and, you know, children now, they're growing up you know, with this like intrinsic understanding of technology because they've known it since they're babies, right? Yeah. Um, so we're getting a lot of exposure to the, the blue light that comes off of devices, right? Now, the, the jury is out as far as whether it will damage your eyes in the long term. I've read a lot of studies. Some suggest strongly that it will damage the macula over time. Others are inconclusive. So, um, the, the something that we do know is that that glare that comes off the screen is very uncomfortable. So if you're staring at a screen for hours on end, as I do most days, um, I write a lot. You know, I do a lot of writing. I do a lot of graphic stuff. Um, and uh, when I'm not at, like out in the community talking to people, and you know, your eyes get very strained. So blurred vision, headaches, dry eyes. These are all you know eye fatigue. At the end of the day, if you're just like I can't, you know, just Ah, you know, that happens to a lot of folks. And there's a couple of different ways that you can address that. One is give your eyes a break. The 20-20-20 rule is golden, right? Every 20 minutes, you gotta just take a little bit of a break. Stop focusing, you know, so close on your screen. Look at something far off about 20 feet in the distance. That's the first 20. Maintain that distance for, that look into the distance for 20 seconds. Interesting. And you're going to do that every 20 minutes. And that will just give your eyes a break from hyper-focusing at intermediate and um, reading distances. Uh, so that's one thing. That's like a best practice. You can even, you know, you can set a little alarm on your phone. You can use the technology for yes. good, right? Set a little alarm on your phone. Just remind yourself, I have to look away. Um, and then the other thing is there's special lenses with coatings that will filter out the more harmful uh, blue light rays, the ones that cause that effect. Um, and uh, they're also anti-glare, so that's great for just kind of soothing, um, you know, the, the work your eye has to do when you're using the devices. So uh, we have a nice coating called Recharge, which but there's many, there's many on the market, but that's the one we like to use, and um, it's yeah. saved it's saved me <laughs> from wow. being a wreck at the end of the day. So I like that. That is <laughs> a challenge, you know, like you say, for so many people because so many of us um, are really in front of the computer. And, it's the new um, way. It's the it's new, new way. way. Work, everything. Even with yeah. children, I mean, I see that, you know, the kids are from their, when they're little, they're two years old and they have an iPad and they're watching or they're playing games and many of the games are, you know, games that are educational, right. but nevertheless, it is, they're there for a while. It could be an hour at a time. So I think like that 20, in there, yeah, yeah. yeah, and they're really focused, you know. Um, so that 2020 rule is actually quite interesting. It's just an easy way to bring some relief to your day. So I recommend it to everybody. So we, um, you know, it is it, it's always great to get information out there because what we think is something that is common sense, it, it might not be common sense. And that's why it's so important that 
you know, that this program, it is about educating, bringing information that could be valuable to you. And you might not have a problem with this, but then you know somebody that has a problem with their eyes. Now you can recommend them to uh, the Central Eye Care, uh, Eye Optical, mm -hmm. right? I said it right? You did. And uh, you guys are located in, in where? You, you we are in Park Still. So it's a small, quiet shopping center, plenty of parking. You can go park, walk right up, 161 South Central Park Avenue. Uh, there's a great little Italian restaurant right next door. It's called Pastinas. Ooh. You have your appointment. You can grab a little lunch. Um, it's a nice shot in Harmon. You know, if you need to pick up any essentials, that's where it's in the Harmon Shopping Center. And there's a window rama there, which I'm just trying to give you some landmarks. Um, but it's in the Hartsdale Shopping Center. So the, the practice itself has been open since 2000. We at the Metro Optics Group acquired the practice in 2018. So it's now, we're still operating under the name Centralized for now because obviously it's on Central Avenue. It's just easy, easier yeah. to remember. Um, it is officially part of our Metro Optics Group. So now we have a lot more resources, including myself. Um, you know, I've been doing this, this is my family business. The Metro Optics Group is my family business. Um, you know, we've, we've been doing this for a long time. My first eye exam and glasses were at the Metro Optics in Westchester Square in the Bronx. Uh, wow. I can't tell you how long ago, <laughs> almost 30 years ago. And uh, next year it'll be 30, 30 years ago. And um, so they've had this business for a We've had this years. business for a long time. You know, eye care is in our blood. And, um, you know, we're very excited about the prospect of being, you know, well, not the prospect, we're in Westchester now. Uh, where a lot of our patients have come to us from Westchester, from various uh, you know neighborhoods, uh, to get the Metro Optics experience, and now, uh, but we still have our friendly Westchester resident face, who is Denise. Denise is our practice manager. She's amazing. She's really very knowledgeable about all the different lenses, and she's got great taste, um, which I'm sure you can appreciate. Oh. Yeah, she's got great taste, and uh, you know she likes to work with patients to find the right fit. Um, as far as uh, frames and the appropriate lenses for them. Um, and then we have a, an eye doctor who is on staff. Uh, well, actually, we have three eye doctors. Um, one will be there on any given day, uh, three days a week. And we also, we do accept walk-ins wherever um, the schedule com can accommodate. Um, but Can you explain what the difference is between an ophthalmologist and what you do? Okay, so we have uh, medical optometrists on staff. So that is an eye doctor who can uh, do comprehensive eye exams and again look for the signs of eye disease as well as check your visual acuity which is basically how well you see how clearly you see um, and look for other things how well your eyes uh, team together uh, color you know your ability to see color etc um, an ophthalmologist is a medical doctor those are the ones who can do surgeries and uh, including LASIK so we do not have um, ophthalmologists on staff, but we have very strong referral relationships should anyone need an ophthalmologist. I know you do as well here. At right, the right. So. And, uh, but if you, so that people would understand, because I'm sure, you know, um, it is uh, something that, again, it's, it's not, uh, not everybody knows, but um, how about uh, if you're a diabetic? Like, would you see an ophthalmologist or would you go to? You, you don't know? necessarily have to see an ophthalmologist. It, it depends on, um, you know, your unique situation, um, you know, depending. I've had, uh, we've had many who can see a medical optometrist. And then if there's something that looks like it's beyond the scope of what one of our optometrists can do, then we will make a referral. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not 100% necessary. It's more important that they go every let's say at least every year if not every six months it depends on right. you know the the diabetes uh, situation that, that they have so. um sarah i want to thank you so much oh, for joining us and we plan to do more stuff together and you know i want to thank you um and uh, so we should I, just talk about this oh yes before we yes go. yes um <laughs> thank you yes. Um, I brought this specifically to remind myself. So this is the postcard that you'll see here at Forme that we for our members. So for all members. of the Forme members, mm -hmm. you'll be able to benefit from this. It's a special. It's a package that we put together specifically for the members. Um, you know, my goal is not only to educate community members through marketing, through events, through all of um, these various uh, channels that I participate in. It's also to make it accessible. Right, as what you were talking about yeah. before, um, not only to encourage people, but also to make it easier for them to do so, to seek eye care, to visit the eye doctor, to get the glasses. So 
Uh, we put a simple package together, the eye exam, a complete pair of glasses, so you could get single vision, which means just distance or just reading, or a bifocal, and you get access to, uh, and that, so that's a complete pair of glasses, mm -hmm. right? You also get access to uh, upgrade discounts, right? So if you want to get a different frame, upgrade your lenses, you also get a credit toward that. So, you know, we want to indulge you if you want to shop a little bit, um, you know, so it, it just makes it accessible for everybody. So just look for this cute postcard when you're here at Forme. <laughs> we, we truly appreciate the, the work that you're doing with us and um, we're very grateful and I'm sure our patients are very grateful too. And a shout um, out to Business Council of Westchester for bringing yes, us together. Actually, that's yes, how we met. That's so. how we met. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they, they actually have a, a big uh, event coming up yes. on the 10th. Uh, I think Gina and I will be there. I heard they have over 900, 900 people. Yeah. So they want to throw a party. <laughs> yeah, they will be partying it up next Business week. This party, but a party. Is a party. Yes. <laughs> um, before I go, I want to ask you. I want to ask for something that um, you know what I'm doing. I am running the New York City Marathon, and I have been training so hard, and. Um, I am doing this for an amazing cause. Uh, I am raising money, as many of you know, for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And we are doing this in the name of Savannah. Savannah is this little girl that one of my employees' best friend lost. 13 years old. Wow. The only child of this couple. She got sick at the age of 11. She couldn't go up the stairs and they took her to the doctor and they found that she had leukemia. And this little girl fought for two years. And after hurting for, for this story, I mean, I, I have been dealing more with my employees' pain than the parents. I did get to speak, um, exchange emails with the parents because I decided that I was gonna run for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Association um, Society because of Savannah, and uh, she lost her bottle of cancer uh, in April, April or May this year, and she was beautiful, beautiful. And what we decided was that the money that we are raising is going to be dedicated to pediatric research. So I am going to be sending, uh, probably tomorrow, there will be a link in a post asking you to please, please donate. My goal is $30,000. I am close to 13, so I have four more weeks, four and a half weeks, and let me tell you, I am going to get there. So thank you so much for always following us and giving us your support. Make sure if you like us, give us a like. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Sarah.